the United Methodist Foundation, and I'll uh, be your host again today. Uh, welcome back to the second part of the United Methodist Foundation of Louisiana's two-part webinar on church communications strategies. Today, the topic is the future. I don't know if we're going back to the future, but the topic is the future. And we're excited to have Todd Rossnagel join us again today as we look at the what the future of church communications might look like. As y'all know, Todd is the Director of Communications for the Louisiana Annual Conference. It's a position he's held since 2016. Todd is active in the church and he's received, he received his licensed local pastor's designation in 2014. Todd is a former news broadcaster and on-air personality. He has a real knack for finding and telling a compelling story. If you see anything in, on the conference website, any of his video work or subscribe to the Louisiana Now podcast, you know that this is one of Todd's great talents. And if you haven't subscribed for the Louisiana Now podcast, let me say you should because you're missing out and it's a great resource uh, provided by the conference. So Todd is, uh, has been a great gift to the congregation and a great friend to the foundation over the years. And we're excited to have him joining us again today. I mentioned something personal about Todd yesterday that he's a, a long time uh, Chicago Cubs fan. Um, you almost said, you almost said suffering, didn't you? I almost said suffering. I caught yep. myself. Um, I will say this about Todd. One other personal note about Todd is that, uh, Todd is well known in our conference, and I would submit that Todd is also probably well known across the Middle East. Todd has taken, taken several trips to the Middle East um, with our conference leadership, and uh, I think Todd has some stories that he could share at another time about uh, some of the culinary impacts <laughs> of adjusting to food in the Middle East <laughs> on a Holy Land trip. Some some adjust better than others, uh, and I and I will say, Chris, uh, and and that is a good segue to we are recruiting for our January trip back to the Holy Land, um, and you know I always tell people this: um, if you if you want to go with a photographer and you want to learn photography in the Middle East, come with us because I'm there and I give out free photography advice. Um, I know where to where to stand, where not to stand, where to get the great photos. So we are, we are recruiting and maybe Kelly, um, you can uh, send the details on the Holy Land trip in your uh, response to everyone who's in the, in the call here today. But I, I am excited. Can I go, Chris? Can I get going? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. great. So I am super, super excited about today's content. Uh, yesterday, we kind of teased it. And we kind of talked about what we're going to talk uh, about today. So let me share my screen and, and, and get us going here. Um, thanks to all of you for uh, for joining us. Uh, really do appreciate it. Um, so as I mentioned, um, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly. Today, we're talking about the future and what the future holds. Um, and um, so today we're going to talk about how it's still all about email, but it's also difficult with email. As you probably know, if you're a communicator in a local church, it's difficult to communicate via email. We'll talk a little bit about that. We'll talk about how to improve your emails. We'll talk about how to attract new followers, but more specifically, new people who might be interested in your church services. It's this idea of click funnels. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about the rise of TikTok and what it means. And, and another idea of mine, which is not a groundbreaking idea, but it is uh, kind of an old school idea of how, for how to communicate. We'll talk about all that. But uh, first we need to talk about email and how it's an absolute mess, but it's still king. Studies show that our blood pressure rises when we go to check our inboxes. I don't know why that is, um, and and maybe uh, maybe you can um, kind of give us a thumbs up or, 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 or something. I don't know if I'm the only one, um, but my, my blood pressure does go up a little bit, I think, when I check our, my inbox. Um, you know, checking Facebook status is one thing, checking Instagram status is another thing, but when I go to my inbox, I kind of feel like it's somebody is asking me to do something 
Um, and gone are the days when we first got an email account and it was like, oh, I'm going to get this letter from my uncle and it's going to be like nine pages long and I get to hear from him for the first time. Now it's just, it's cluttered. It's, you know, I, I don't need the circular from Walgreens in my inbox, but somehow they found me and it's there and I got to sort through all that stuff. And then the emails that, that are my, are directly attention to me. Um, it's just, there's, there's a blood pressure thing going on there, but it's still king. I made this point yesterday. Um, if you were to go to a seminar and they said, you know, we have a PDF of everything you've learned in this seminar, you're going to want that emailed to you. Uh, and we've done a pretty good job in our email of, of trying to get through the clutter. And we, um, I know some people, um, my, my assistant here at, uh, at the conference, Mary does a phenomenal job of organizing her email through threads and boxes. And, you know, an email from Todd will go in this box an email from this person will go in that box. So we do a good job of organizing our email and it's a lot more organized than say our social media channels. So again, email is a bit of a mess. I mean, we, 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 for some reason, we just don't read emails, but it is still the primary way to get in touch with someone aside maybe from their phone, but we know that the phone is very personal. So the, ve the next best option to get in touch with someone is still, uh, an email and think about it this way. Um, I think this is a really good stat and I'm going to I'm going to repeat this. So let's 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 read this together here. If you have a thousand email subscribers and you send an email, you're likely to have over 200 people opening it and over 30 people clicking on it. If you have a thousand Facebook fans and send an update, maybe 10 will see it and only 3 will click on it. So again, if you have a thousand email subscribers and you send an email, you're likely to have 200 people open it and 33 people click on it. I know the click through rate is ridiculous. A th only 33 people of the thousand that you send it. That's just the nature of the beast that we're dealing with today because people just don't pay attention. Their, their, their minds are wandering. Um, but if you have a thousand Facebook fans and you send an update, a lot of times people think, oh, I'm going to put this out on Facebook and people are going to see it and people are going to click on it. Well, they're not but they will, you have a better chance of engagement through email. So I, I, this, this right here, this stat really, it really drives home the point that as much as email is a, is a mess, um, and, and especially post COVID, because we've just got a lot of things that are, that are distracting us these days, email remains king. So, um, and, I, and I think that that's very important. So that leaves us with the question of what does that make Facebook? Well, just earlier I was talking about how our email uh, patterns have changed in the last 10 years, and so has Facebook. Um, we are liking more things on Facebook. Uh, we, are, we are friends with more people on Facebook more people are sharing on Facebook. And that means that our Facebook feeds are incredibly cluttered. Um, the, it, you know, I used this analogy yesterday. It is a lot like a, um, an, an information superhighway when you get on Facebook. You are driving down the road and you have time to maybe look up at a billboard and then boom, you're on to the next thing. That's what Facebook has been like. We don't, we don't sit on Facebook and just chill. I mean, maybe you do. Maybe there's some people out there that still do that. But I think it's more of just scrolling by things. So we need to be conscious of that when we post things to Facebook. And most specifically, to the point I was making earlier, we can't post long, lengthy things and think that people are going to really dive into that content. It's just not going to happen. Um, and then the other, I, the other thing that's really important, especially for pages, when we manage our pages for either the church uh, or for a group, you just you have to boost your posts. You have to do it. It is, it is, it is non-negotiable at this point. Um, if you just put something out there on the church and you don't boost it, 
um, th- nobody's going to see it. I mean, maybe some 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 big followers who follow your church will see it, but they're not. They're they You need to boost your posts. It's just a. It's it's kind of non negotiable at this point. And you don't need to spend a lot of money. It's like five bucks a post if it's something important. So here's some posting guidelines that I got off the web. Samantha Hardcastle from a more social. She says we need to keep these things in mind, and I think this is good. And I kind of I've I've tweaked this a little bit to a church setting. Um, you got to pull the person in, right? You got to have an interesting photo. You've got to have an interesting post uh, or a headline. Um, it has to have a clear purpose. It has to paint a picture of what's possible. I've talked about this a lot whenever I've talked about social media. Don't tell me what's happening. Tell me why it's happening. So if you're posting photos of your vacation Bible school, don't tell me that you're having a vacation Bible school. Tell me why you're having vacation Bible school. Now you've completely flipped the narrative and it draws people in and it paints a picture of what's possible at your church. Have an opportunity to express your values, evoke emotion, maybe have an element of surprise and make sure that it's compelling and prevents a, uh, presents a unique perspective because you want, to, you want your post to stand out Uh, The more that they can stand out, the better that's going to be. So now to my big idea that I have, it's called click funneling or click funnels. Um, And we're going to get, we're going to possibly get some questions here. And I am not an expert in this. As soon as I start talking about this, people are start asking, well, why doesn't the conference do click funnels? Well, the conference is very different than a local church. So we're, our structure is based a little bit differently than you at the local church. But here's the idea of click funneling. So You want to move move people from awareness to potentially a little interested. Then they begin to consider something. Then they have an intent. Then they evaluate it. And then they become a fan. So here's what that looks like. Here's what click funnels look like. And as soon as I show you this, you're going to be like, oh, those things are super annoying. But, But listen to how we're going to change this for a church setting. I think it's really interesting. So this is what we refer to as a click funnel. You see these on the web. It's like, give me your name, your last name, and your email address, and you'll get something for free, right? Give me... So this one here, free guide and workbook, workbook, five habits to revolutionize your business, a guide to the Friday habit system, how to set aside one day per week, how to capture problems and ideas, how to review and decide weekly, how to take action and see real change. And you probably searched somewhere on the web and found this and you're like, I, I want that. And so this particular author, this particular company is giving away something in exchange for your email address. Now that's gold to them if they have your email address. Now they're going to spam you to death with a bunch of things. We're not going to do that in the church level, but I'll show you how having that email address is really important. So you've seen these, you know, um, uh, you know, fill out this form or give us your email address and we'll give you the top 10 things you need to be doing today for retirement. And you're like, I probably need to be doing some things for retirement. It's free. It's just a PDF. I'll give them my email address and then you get it back. So what does that look like in a church setting? What would it look like if at your church you would say, if you would put a post out there and you would you would have a campaign and there's lots of different things out there if you Google click funnels and how to employ them, what would it look like if you said, give me your email address and we'll send you a guide to dinner time, how to pray before meals and have fruitful conversations. Free guide contains 12 dinner time prayers and engaging questions. And you know for a fact that people in your church are struggling with this very issue because it's real. A lot of busy moms and dads and they're going to be back to some sort of normalcy and they just, th- this, this will feed a need. And you could put together a PDF on this with your pastor, and this could easily get together. You know, here's some prayers, and here's some how to have a fruitful conversation. And you brand it with your church, and included in that PDF is ways that that person can connect. Or maybe this idea, overcoming Christmas stress, what we can learn from tangled Christmas lights. Now, I don't know what we could learn from tangled Christmas lights, but I know wonderful pastors like um, Jay Hogwood, I know you can make tangled Christmas lights preach. Absolutely, you could make tangled Christmas. There's a message in tangled Christmas lights and stress. And um, get our free guide to reducing Christmas stress, daily devotions to help you reconnect with Christ this Christmas season. Email us today. And that email 
that PDF gets sent to them. So what do you get from, a, from, a per, from your perspective? You get an email address, which is really good. You get an email address from someone who wants to go deeper. You get an email address from someone who wants to go deeper who might not be a member of your church. You get an email address of someone who wants to go deeper who might not be in your church or who might be in your church, and you know that they read email. So you see how valuable this becomes? You know that they're checking their email because they're going to check and, and get the PDF. And now you've got a whole host of other people that you can begin to reach out to in your community. Um, think about it this way. What would it look like if, say, in New Orleans, you specifically targeted agnostic community? And you said, here are 10 ways that, that we invite agnostics to celebrate Christmas with us. I, I'm, just, I'm just spitballing ideas here, right? Or um, you specifically targeted a specific group of people that you know you want to reach out to, maybe for Easter or back to school or summer. Um, this, I think... Uh, is really interesting. We need to be in the business of giving away content. It helps your brain. Like you, th you could you could build an entire sermon series on this, and they could be getting it in in their inboxes. So that's click funnels. That's what I think is a is a is a big move going forward. So you might have some questions about that, and we'll save those for the end. But I really like this idea. Not a lot of people are doing it at the church level, and I think it needs to be done. Um, and again, you're not, you're not going to take this email and spam them, but you're going to have a way to communicate with those people. Um, I, I, think it, I think it's cool. I think it's good stuff. You could throw it out on social and all kinds of things. The other thing that we need to talk about, we talked about this yesterday, is TikTok is here. It is here. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to say it's here to stay because, you know, five, six years ago, I said Facebook is here to stay, and Facebook probably is here to stay, but... Um, TikTok is, it's the jam right now. And the reason why it's the jam is because it is short, it's brief, it's to the point. And I want to share with you, um, are we okay? Did I? Okay. I got kicked off on this other thing here. We're good, Kelly? We're, okay. All right, good. Um, so this is Chris Winterman up in North Louisiana is doing, he has a TikTok channel, and they are doing phenomenal stuff but he, I wanted to show you this. Um, this is his, he, his, his handle on, on TikTok is 15 Second Theology. Listen to this. Genesis chapters one through three is not a science nor a history text. It's a theological and philosophical text. It doesn't answer the question of when and how. It answers the questions of who and why. Now, that's awesome. I love that. Um, and if you go to his channel and you see Chris's work, um, it's just his iPhone. He turns it around and he spends 15 seconds giving a little quick sermon. And his engagement has gone through the roof. And I talked to him the other night and I said, tell me a little bit more about how this started. And, you know, he said, look, I, I produce what I consume. He, he, he is on TikTok and he follows TikTok for a variety of different things. And, you know, it's not, like I said yesterday, it's not all about just dancing videos, although there, there's a ton of that stuff. And a, there's also a ton of celebrity stuff and all that. But I, I, I'm on TikTok. Um, I'm on TikTok to, I, I follow baseball videos. Imagine that. Um, and I, I follow funny golden retriever videos. Imagine that. And, uh, and there's also these theological things that are happening in the space. And it's just really, really fun and interesting. And, and Chris says that, you know, he's had people respond, um, and then people have messaged him inside the app. And, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't say that it's resulted in, you know, droves of people, you know, banging down the doors to come into the church, but it has started conversation. And, you know, like I've said before, it is one tool of many tools that need to be in your social media toolbox. But I really am a big fan of TikTok, I think. And, and that is also on Instagram Reels. So Instagram Reels is the place to do that. I mean, how many of you could easily be doing, how many of you could just, you know, as, as we get ready for Christmas shopping season, could you be shopping, you pull out your phone and, and, and you think, I could make this preach for 15 seconds, you could do a quick 
uh, quick sermon. Um, now, I know that that flies in the face of everything that you think a sermon is, right? I mean, you're supposed to be, you know, breaking down uh, scripture and looking at the historical analysis of the text and using, you know, studying. You can do it. I, 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 think, I think you could do it. Um, and I think that people will really, 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 truly engage with it. Now, here's my final idea. So you've got the click funneling, you've got TikTok is a, is a big thing. These are big, these are two things that I think have, have come out of the pandemic. But here's the biggest one. The biggest one. Drum roll, please. Here it is. Old school, sit down, write a letter. I know. I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. But in today's world where we are so connected to our devices, imagine what will happen is if imagine what happens when you go to your mailbox and you see a letter from your friend and it's handwritten, not Christmas time, because you know it's gonna be a Christmas card, but other than Christmas time, and you see the letter and it says your name on it, and you open it, and it's a handwritten letter from someone. I mean Folks, there is no better way to capture someone's attention than to write them an old-fashioned letter. So what does that look like in the church setting? That looks like, you know, if you haven't if you've got people who have fallen off that aren't aren't coming to church anymore, maybe it is a old-fashioned letter that you that you write them as opposed to a text message or an email or a Facebook message. Um, what does it look like to invite someone to a Bible study? And you write them a letter and say, you know, you've been on my heart. I really think you'd be needed in this class. I think you'd gain a lot, and I think you would be great for this class. Please come join us. So um, I think old school is the new school. And I know that's hard, right? I mean, it's like, you know, you got to sit down and actually use your muscles to write a letter. But, uh, you know, the other day I was in, um, my wife and I, we took a trip to Austin, Texas, and we were in this store, and they had these old school postcards. And I was just thinking, you know, what if I had like a box of those off on my desk and I could write letters? Um, the first thing that immediately entered, entered my mind is, I don't know that I have anyone's physical email, uh, physical mail uh, address anymore. Uh, so you'd have to go looking for that. But if you had that, I think, I think breaking through in that analog way uh, in a digital world would be really uh, vital. So those are my big three ideas. That's how I think communication has really changed since we've um, since since COVID. I think we need to go old school and we need to go back. I think we need to be doing a really good job of giving away our material and not just holding things for when people come to church, but give it away in a really unique and, and, and tangible way. And I think that TikTok is here to stay. And I think that um, seeing, seeing people seeing you, your pastors, your, your lay leaders in your churches in their regular settings, as opposed to just, um, in church on Sunday, um, is really cool. So, um, those are my ideas. I'd love to take your questions. Um, I, I will tell you, there are probably some people who think, you know, how do I do the click funnel thing? So I, you know, the, a lot of the websites that you can build nowadays have some of those contact me things built in. I know, um, and some of the websites that I've built on like, you know, Squarespace and things of that nature, you, you, you know, it get an email, it'll send this PDF. There's ways to do that. I don't have that completely kind of fleshed out, but I know that it's there and it's available for people uh, to do. Um, but I, th I think that that would be a really uh, unique thing to do. So I'm starting to repeat myself, which happens quite a bit. Um, so if you have any questions, I'd love to hear from you. I would love to know how many of you do the old school letter thing, and I'm just not receiving letters. <laughs> Maybe I need to have a conversation with someone who's not writing me a letter. Um, uh, <laughs> let's see here. Um, one of the comments, I've seen stats that show TikTok has a very young audience. Would you target youth when using TikTok? I think, I think TikTok's audience is growing in age. Um, I really do. I think there's a lot of people on the TikTok world that are like, kinda, you know, they got the political bent to them. And that's where they're having a lot of, a lot of debate right now. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, TikTok is growing in age. It's growing. You know, there's, there's a lot of young people there, too. But I think it's also growing um, in, in the age demo. 
Um, and I wish Chris were here. He could kind of tell us more about that. But, um, you know, you've got you've to play with the, the hashtags and things of that nature to kind of get attention. But, um, you know, the other thing that Chris is doing, I think I saw this the other day, um, he, uh, he, he, there was this atheist who did this snarky video about the church. And he, you can do these things called duets on TikTok where he shared some of that person's um, point that that person was making, and then he refuted it. And that mm. really, the engagement really starts to go up because now you're engaged with that person's fans. Um, so that's kind of interesting what he was able to do there. So any other questions? Todd, while we're waiting on questions, I'm going to sure. jump in for a couple of things. It's a couple of little housekeeping things. Um, as, as I mentioned yesterday, we will be emailing the webinar uh, recording to everyone who's on today. Uh, and it will be on our website, www.umf.org, later this week. Um, also, you can go to our website at any time to, to look at the lineup of webinars or to view a past webinar. Just go to our website and scroll down. Uh, you'll see the site that says, and it's coming up now, uh, but even on our website, you'll see uh, ongoing off, under ongoing offers on our main page, free webinars and webinar recordings. I'm looking at that now. Um, finally, next, uh, next week on next Wednesday, November 10th, we will have our latest uh, webinar, Taking Care of Business, a roadmap for those who will someday take care of you, presented by Phyllis McLaurin, a lifelong Methodist, uh, who is a retired private banking executive, and she'll discuss the importance of creating that roadmap for our loved ones of how to take care of our personal business when we are no longer able, and also to take care of our family members uh, and guide them uh, when they move in with us, as all statistics and trends show that uh, most adults in their lifetime are going to take care of at least one family member and maybe more. And so Phyllis has done a great job of putting together a book. It's really a workbook uh, that is a roadmap for a lot of thinking a lot of the, uh, the scope of the things that, that you need, that we all need to have as a roadmap for taking care of our lives. And we will be giving away Phyllis's book free to the first 30 people who register and attend. And you can register on our website. More questions. Awesome. Todd. Yeah, so we got a comment from Darlene said that uh, Reverend Jonathan Beck and the staff at Munholland send handwritten cards to church members. I just, I, I think that's a, um, that's a good thing. I, I think more of it um, needs to happen. Um, but you probably already know that. Um, but again, I think, you know, sometimes I think what happens with technology is we, we flash forward and it's a lot like a swing on a swing set. You, you love going forward, but really the only way you get forward is if you come back. You gotta get, you gotta, the energy's gotta come back to go forward. Um, and, um, and so I think sometimes we, we, we go out too far um, and then I think, I think we're in that space right now where we're out, we're way out and we're losing this ability to really truly connect with people. And we're having these, um, oh, I cannot tell you the, 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 uh, the, the silos that we're operating in. It is just incredibly dangerous. Um, so we, we got to break out of that. So I don't have a solution there if I did. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg would hire me. I don't know that I'd work for him, but you know. All right. Um, oh, Joanne Pounds is uh, saying something here. She said, I wrote a bunch of letters before Ida, almost none after. I try to add them back. On TikTok, do you think it would be better to have a personal account, a church account, or both? I think both. Um, uh, I think, you know, um, we have a conference. Uh, the conference has a TikTok account. We've been sharing some of our recovery stories, and I think we've, uh, we're going to start sharing some of our podcast episodes on TikTok as, as best we can, which, by the way, is sponsored by the United Methodist Foundation. And um, so we'll, uh, we'll continue to do that on TikTok. But, and I have a TikTok page. Um, I, I share videos of my dog. So I am not preaching what I – I am not – 
following what I'm preaching. But then again, I'm not a real pastor. I'm just a communicator. So like y'all are like in the weeds and y'all have much more followers than I would. I mean, I'm just, I'm just a tall dude with a dog and a wonderful family. And a Cubs hat. And a Cubs hat. That's what I need to do. I need to make the Cubs preach and, and start making that my TikTok channel. Todd, I do have a question for you, uh, just in case while waiting for anybody else to to uh, to post a, a question to you. So uh, all these all the social media outlets that we're talking about are yeah. um, one of you know one of the common themes is for for them as a church. I think for us the the, the struggle and the challenge is really staying up to date, uh, stay consistently posting consistently responding how what are your what are the best practices that you see in your role as conference communications director at churches and how they handle that because very few of our churches have a full-time todd ross nagel or a full-time communications yeah director who can literally be on tiktok facebook insta 24 7 yeah. or be even monitoring 24 7 what are your thoughts there Great, great question, Chris. And if I were in the local church, here's what my solution to this problem would be. So one of the quick things that I would do, I think I think I saw some of this. I think I saw it at Broadmoor uh, UMC. Um, is Christy, I thought I saw Christy's name here, but they were doing a phenomenal job of taking photos of people who came by the church to get relief. And they were, I mean, they're, uh, Christy, you can help me with this. I think there was some sort of deal called Stories of New York or Faces of New York or something like that. Um, yeah. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So is that, was, that the, was that the, the inspiration, the, the, the New York thing? Or maybe it's uh, maybe I'm just making that up. Um, actually, you know, I can't take credit for that. Donnie started that when we had the flood in 2016. Right. Um, and so I don't know if they were doing, I know what you're talking about, the stories from New York. I don't know if they were doing that, you know, five years ago, but, um, Donnie started that because we were a big distribution center in 2016 right. and our community was, was really hurt. Um, and so Donnie started doing that. And so, uh, he picked that up again and it was very moving, um, very engaging and, uh, and we would share it on other, we had multiple pages, a, a kid's page, a youth page, and then a food ministry page. And, um, and we would share it with, with all those pages that cross promote it. Yeah. And, and I, I think, I think sharing those stories is, is, is fantastic and it doesn't have to be disaster stories. What would it look like if you made a concerted effort in your churches to go around and take a photo of every single person that was there on a Sunday, you, you just get a volunteer to walk around with their cell phone, take a picture, and then you grab a quick, why are you here? And then you grab that person's name and you would have, let's say you took 30 photos on a Sunday. You could, you could high highlight 30 people in 30 days or two people a week for the next couple of weeks and you could show people it's not just me and the i mean these are real people who are coming to our church and are saying good things about our church and it's a photograph and you could do that on insta you could do that on facebook um that's one that's one thing that i would do is if i i would take photos of my people i mean the advanced course in this is you would take video of the people saying you know why are you coming to this church what do you get out of this church um what is your invitation to others on this church and then you you begin to tag those people on facebook and then every single person that's connected to that person will see it because they're tagged you know that person's going to share it um there's just there's not a lot of that that I think is happening at the local church level. We're doing a great job of sharing our sermons and sharing what we're what we're talking about, what we're doing at our churches. But to hear from the actual people who are there, I think that uh, I think that would be a good thing. Of course, I'm, there's probably some churches that are already doing this, but that's one idea that I would have. And then, um, kind of in the same vein, when we had uh, Hurricane Ida, we got photos of people helping and volunteering, and you know, we had like, you know, 
you know, 90 to 100 photographs. Well, you know, I'm not going to share all 90 photographs at once. You know, you just you begin to kind of schedule these things out as they go as they go back. And a lot of times what we'll do is we'll start to reverse engineer back from some of these big days that that are coming up. So, you, you know, so think about like reverse engineering from Easter, what what that would look like. What does it look like the Sunday before Easter? What does it look like the Wednesday or the Thursday before Easter? And you begin to come up with a social media calendar for what that would look like. Um, and very quickly you'll realize that um, you can begin to have a lot of content that's out there. And then the other thing I've told people is, um, and I've used this analogy in my social media classes, um, which I don't get to teach as often as I used to, but um, I do. I do this for the license to preach folks. Um, you gotta you, you, don't be afraid to share other people's content. Um, and and you know the the analogy or the the, the 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 example that I use is there's this Dove soap commercial that um, is just the, one of the most moving commercials I've ever seen in my life, and it's about Dove mm -hmm. soap, but it's really about dads. And, um, and it is, uh, you know, you can, you can make this commercial preach. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can try to find the link and share it with you all, but, you know, share other people's content too. It doesn't always have to be like this individual content that you produce. So, um, photographs that's, you know, if I were in a local church and I was, I would hire a photographer, like a legit photographer, because that good photographs of your people doing great things whether it's the pumpkin hunt or sunday or a bible study Woo! good photos move people it's just that will not change just it's it's the truth um let's see here um oh we got some questions here um are tiktok videos limited in length um mary answered that i think you can post up to three minutes some, in some cases, only two minutes. I think you have to have like a verified account to go longer than that. But I, you know, a three minute TikTok, uh, you know, if it's not really compelling, I'm, I'm moving on. So, um, all right. Todd, any other words of wisdom for us today? Um, than, you know, I'll, than... I'll, I'll, I'll I'll leave you with this um, for those who are still here and uh, thank you for sticking around. Um, and I, I briefly mentioned this um, in my presentation. You got to tell me why mm -hmm. you got to tell me why yeah. if, if, if you're, if you're telling me what's happening, that's good. There's a good, you know, it's, it's informational, but if you start telling me why, like the analogy I used earlier, you know, if you take a pictures, if you're, if you're taking pictures of a pumpkin hunt or that you've got pumpkins ready for a pumpkin hunt or, or let's go, let's move a little forward on the calendar. So you've got, you know, you know, Christmas is coming up. You can send an email or a post about all the things that are happening, Christmas Eve service and all these things. And those, those posts are important, but the one that you want to boost and the one that you really want to talk, why are you doing Christmas? Why are you doing Christmas? Why should the average person come to your church for Christmas? What is the compelling reason? The more you can post and talk about why you're doing something, the more compelling that post is going to be, the more engagement you're going to have. So don't forget the why. What is important, the why is super important. You know, Todd, to follow up on that, don't know if you've read the, the business kind of self-help book called Start With Why, but... The author is a guy named Simon Sinek, and it's a great TED Talk if you've never not fantastic. seen fantastic. Bishop He's Harvey published. had it at annual conference a few years ago. That's exactly right. And his quote that stands out to me always is, people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. That's right. Absolutely. That yep. It has great repercussions for the church in the day and time that we're living in. Yep. Well... Thank you, everyone, for, for listening to me ramble. I, I envy all of you for all of the work that you're doing at the local church level. Um, I know it's hard to get people to come in and, and get people to, to tune in online. It's, 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 it's a new day, and it's, 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 it's difficult. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you all for joining us today. Todd, we really appreciate your time. Oh, thanks for inviting me wisdom and your expertise and for everybody out there uh, if you haven't done so yet 
go sign up for Todd's podcast, Louisiana Now. And please join us next uh, Wednesday for our next webinar with Phyllis McLaurin. And our webinar today will be has been recorded and will be up on our site probably in the next few days. So we appreciate you and we appreciate all of you and the work that you do to echo what Todd said. Have a great afternoon and appreciate your support of the foundation. Take care.